Hello everyone, this is Prem Kumar. In this video, we are going to create our very first case type in Pega. As I told during the introduction of this video series, every business process can be translated into a case. For example, if you take the loan origination process, there if you see the loan processing, it can go through different stages. It can have its own life cycle. So that can be converted into a case life cycle. Here, for our real life organization, we are going to define the case life cycle for the clients processing. Normally, these business processes can vary per organization. So you have to sit with the business people and determine the outlook or determine the case life cycle journey. I have already defined the case life cycle. Let's see how it goes. It all start with the end user collecting all the details from the customer who is applying for the clients. From here, we create a new clients case with all the information that is collected. Once the information is collected, then it can go to the investigation department where the investigation can be performed to verify all the documents or all the collected information. Once the investigation is successful, then it can go to the approval. So a clients can have a clients manager who can approve or reject the request based on the investigation happened. On a happy path, when the manager approves the case, then the case can move to the payment settlement team where the amount can be settled to the customer. So this is on a high level how the A-Life organization does the clients processing. Our job is to implement all these business processes of the clients processing into a PEGA application by creating a new case type. Once we get all these business requirements, then we can sit and create our own HLD, the high level design for our case type. Let's talk about some of the points that helps with the design approach for the clients processing. The first solution, it can be like a clients can be a single case that have all the parallel processes or the sub processes that can do. For example, investigation can be a sub process, payment settlement can be a sub process. There can be only one case which you can create in PEGA. This is one solution. There can be another solution where you can create investigation as a child case so that you can spin up the investigation and the case, the child case can route to the investigation department and they can complete the investigation. And once this investigation is completed, then you can continue with the parent case, which is the client case. So in this solution, we will spin up a child case, the investigation to parent clients. The third solution approach can be, clients can be a parent case again, but you can also have payment settlement, the payment as a child case. There can be also hybrid solutions where you can have single clients parent case and have investigation as a child case, payment settlement as a child case. These are all different solution approaches you can take. Then you have to sit and decide what can be the best solution. So you have to make a tabular column discussing about the pros and cons. Normally we go with creating child cases when we have some kind of reporting requirements or some kind of security requirements or there are different participants they want to involve in the parent and child case and also the locking strategy determines creating a child case. I'm not going to go much in detail into this lecture but here after discussing all the pros and cons I decided that the second solution which you see in the screen to have clients as a parent case and investigation as a child case that will be my best solution approach so let's see how we can create our first clients case type so i have logged in into the pega Designer studio now in pega Designer studio how to create a new case type that is what you see in the screen you go to the case type explorer and from here you can start adding a new case type let's start with that click on create add a new case type it will open up a modal dialog where you can fill all the details for your case type. So my case type, it is going to be climbs request. So I'll give the name climbs request. Under advanced settings, you can define the class inheritance path, also the rule set layer. I haven't explained about the class inheritance path, but it's going to be my next video. But to give you a short brief summary about it, if you use any kind of solution frameworks, or if you have your own framework layer, then you can specify the derives from direct inheritance to the framework work layer. For now, since we are not using it, so I'm not going to change anything here. And also on the rule set layer, you can define under which rule set you are going to create your case type. Ideally, for implementation application layer, it should be always under the implementation rule set. So I'm going to select the implementation rule set and the rule set version, which is open, you can select that. And you also have a checkbox remote case type. 
This corresponds to federated case management where your case type can be used by different applications. Since this is a different topic or it's like a complex topic, you can explore it or browse on your own. Now you can click submit to create a new case type. As you can see now, we have successfully created our first case type, the client's records and it also opened the case designer. Now let's also look at the rules that got created during the case type creation. To do that, you can go to configure, application, development and then recent actions that is going to give you the list of rules that got recently created or updated. You can see all the operator name is under my name because I'm the only one developer in this development server and you also see the list of rules that got created or updated. Let's check the type. You see application, it got updated and then you see a view, it got newly created, class metadata got created, harness got created, section got created, data page got created, report definition is also got created. And the interesting thing is on the case type, so a new case type is created where you can define the stages and steps for your client's processing. And you also see a starter flow got created of create form and then a class rule got created. Let's look at the class rule first. To check out the class rule, you can go to the app explorer and then you can do a refresh. There you will find the newly created class that is under the work layer. And if you expand this client's request class layer, there you will find the rules that are part of the client's request. As you see, data model, you should hold the data page. Process will hold the case type flow work parties and reports report definition. And under sysadmin, you will find the class rule. Let's open the class rule from there. If you click on the class rule, it will open up the configurations for your class. About class and its inheritance is going to be my next video. But for now, I'll briefly explain you about the configurations. It is of concrete class. And then you also see the versions and it belongs to your class group. And also you find the inheritance configurations. One interesting thing is you can click here to do the test connection or you can find the DB table to which this class gets mapped to. A class gets mapped to the DB table so that all the class instances and in here all the case instances will go under this table. It is of PC A life client sub work. And you know how this class gets mapped to the DB table that is via database table instance. If you go to records and then go to sysadmin and then click on this database table there you will find the list of database tables that are already available in the system and you will find the class name it gets mapped to the db table instance via this database table instance okay now coming back to the app explorer if we expand this case type you will find py default as a case type under this class if you click then you can find the case type of the rule where you can do a lot of configurations you can start with the defining the processes maybe the case wide processes the child cases you can define then you can also use the calculations you can use the stages where you can define the stages and steps for your case type there are a lot more configurations which you can do in the case type but i would recommend you to use the case designer so how to access the case designer is if you go to case type and just click on this client's records that will open up the case designer this view is called case designer and the py default we call it as case type you can also open this case type from here. If you click here and click open, that is going to open you the case type. But we are going to do all our changes into the case designer instead of this case type. So let's get back to the case designer. And from here, you see you can define the case life cycle. You can define your data model. You can define your views also for your case type. And finally, in the settings option, you can also define the advanced settings for your case type. Throughout the coming videos in this series, I'm going to explain different configurations which you can do under a case type. Now we know what are the rules or the supporting rules that got created during the case type creation. Let's also create a new case and check what are the Pegas out of the box rules that helps to create a new case. And also we will look into the clipboard to check out the structure of a new case. First, let's start with the tracer and identify the Pega rules that helps to create a new case in Pega. To do that, you just start your tracer. Make sure you use this DB query option. Just check this as well. Make sure activities and this data transforms are checked also and then do a OK. So this is going to trace your session. It is going to identify the rules that is responsible for the case creation execution. Now our tracer is ready. It is going to trace from designer studio. You can create case in multiple ways. If you open the case designer, then from here you can also do save and run. That is going to save first and then create a new case. You can also use the create menu. 
if you go to create menu and from here you see under new you have the climbs records click on it this is going to create a new climbs records case and we should be seeing the tracer now let's check the tracer and from the tracer you can see it is capturing all the rules that are responsible for the case creation now i just pause this tracer just scroll down to find the rules that are responsible if you check here most of the rules it will be under this pega rule set it means all the out of the box rules that helps with the case creation as you can see here there is an ui action that triggered the new from flow the activity and then it starts calling the work new so it creates a new case and then you see it creates a work page create work page this is one of the main thing where it creates a py work page this is like a keyword page which holds all the case details which you can find it under the clipboard so once i complete this tracer then i'm going to show you how to use the clipboard to check the case details now if you scroll little up then you will find the other rules also you see py default data transform gets called and then you also see party new setup so we also saw a work party rule got created so that is used to set up an work party for this case and then it continues with calling different different pegas out of the box activities you see add work this is one of the main activity that helps to add or create a new work and then you see generate id as you know every case should have an unique id for us clients request it is going to be of c hyphen then it is going to hold some unique id for example the first case it can be c hyphen 1 and the next case it should be unique right you should not have again c hyphen 1 so pega uses this db table pc data unique id which holds the unique ids or the latest ids for your case type so generate id is responsible to generate an unique id for case again you can scroll to find a new assignment got created there are a lot and lot more rules which you can also explore on your own okay before we also saw that cases get persisted into the db table the mapped db table right let's check that as well now let's go to the postgres console and find the right table if you go to the data schema and then expand these tables there you will find a lot of tables we know that our table is pc a life climbs up work right so if you do and then try to view the data just get all the roles here you can see the first case c hyphen one that just got created now and you can also find all the details that are part of this case type for example the organization division you need and also if you expand this column there you will get a lot of details and all these 94 columns are out of the box columns that is going to hold your case details okay now we know that this case is persisted into the database table now let's also open this case and check it from the clipboard as you see this case is already open c hyphen one now if you open this clipboard and there you will find the page the py work page which got created if you click on py work page there you will find lot of details that are associated with the case type for example the px create date time the px create operator the py id the py label there are lot and lot of properties that are associated with the case type these are all single value properties you will also have some kind of aggregate properties for example the px flow which holds all the flow names the active flow name and also the stage history which is going to show you the list of stages that the case has been crossed all these properties you see are appended to the case by using the pegas out of the box activity we can also add a lot of properties to the case type for example all the customer details you can add it under an aggregate property the loan details you can add it you can add the single value property like the climbs amount or the customer type there are different different properties which you can add it into the case type you can also expose it into the db table so by using these debugging tools by using tracer you can find all the pegas out of the box rules that helps with the case creation and using clipboard you can find the different attributes that are part of the case type you don't have to open the database table to check the attributes instead you can just open the case from the business studio and use the clipboard to find all the attributes i'll end this video here so we have created our first case type in the coming videos in this series we will define a new views we will define stages and steps we will use different steps into those stages see you in my next video